Hi guys, I'm with Brian Rashid, who is the CEO of Life in Short and an international speaker. Bye. Nice to be with I you. Will, I will let you. I, I will let him explain more of his job, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much for being uh, here with me and and uh, for doing this interview. Um, super excited to be talking to your audience in Cameroon. Um, so, I mean, basically, to, to make a, a sort of a long story short, I am the founder of a company called The Life in Shorts. We do branding and communications strategy for some of the biggest brands in the world, as well as some of the smallest solo entrepreneurs. Um, and we've recently launched our nation branding wing of our agency, which will be focusing a lot on helping countries, cities, states, init and the initiatives that take place within those countries, cities, and states tell that story in the best, most exciting way possible. Mm -hmm. Lots of cool things happening around the world. So um, we, we basically help you tell that story in the best way possible. In a line, basically what I say when I talk about what I do is uh, I sell stories that, uh, I, I, help sell, I help tell stories mm -hmm. that sell. Um, so that's something that I feel very passionate about and that's something that I think is, is necessary in today's economy when there's so much noise. Um, yeah. And so that's, essentially what we do uh, our office is in new york city but we also have an office satellite office in medellin colombia um, and when i'm there it's amazing and the other six months a year i spend traveling speaking to entrepreneurs at tech conferences to students around the globe about the importance of personal brand and storytelling yeah that's i i totally agree with you because you know people tend to underestimate personal branding yeah. but personal branding is a major key in it is in nowadays it's really important and you know you say that you love to travel so maybe you want to expand your brand after or go in another country yeah hundred percent so right now we're we're really active in the United States of America as well as in South America mm -hmm. uh, in Latin America in general in the Caribbean any Spanish speaking places I also speak Spanish um, which I think is you know I would encourage all the people that are listening watching whatever whatever mode you're consuming this in mm -hmm. to really think about how can you get that second language or, or third language under your belt I know you have a yeah. couple yourself yeah. a few um, so right now my focus has been a lot in Latin America and the United States um, being here we're right now in Paris at this Afro tech uh, Afro Bytes tech conference um, I think that Africa has got an amazing opportunity. Um, I've always been extremely drawn to the culture of Africa. I think you, the people are amazingly warm, and the the innov the, the desire to innovate and, and really the, the entrepreneurship like lives a lot in you guys' soul. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean definitely ex global expansion. You know, all of my social platforms are Brian Rashid Global, um, and that's something that's really important to me. But building bridges and and, yeah. and really not barriers. Um, so yeah, totally, you're, you're right on with that. So, like, coming to Africa should be a good opportunity for Oh, you. yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm going to be in, in Nigeria in October. Really? I'm going to be speaking at the uh, Digital Africa Women Conference okay, with Okay, for Khadijah. all my Nigerian ladies. Come. Come. Please, <laughs> please. It's going to be a good time. Um, power of story in a 2017 digital world is going to be the thing I'm talking about. And, um, you know, personal branding. And so I'm excited. I was actually at the very first Digital Africa Women yeah. Conference last year. I was a speaker around also storytelling and um, you know it was it was just real cool to see so much hunger in the African diaspora and in the yeah, African yeah, communities yeah. around this thing because there's you know a kind of rivalry between between the diaspora and the people who are stay there yeah so there is kind it's always hard and you know there's also debate about to go home to stay to yeah. go home to stay but you know I wanted to ask you wh why personal branding why, what is the why you put it first? Why is the branding that you prefer? I, I love that question. I think, you know, for me, <laughs> I, I'm, I've always been afraid of being replaceable. And, yeah. you know, I think that when you, when, you do, when you rely on one platform, basically, so, so let's just say you're going to sell a product. And let's say that you're, you're banking your entire success of that sale of that product on Facebook. You have a big Facebook following or you have a big Instagram following, or you have a big YouTube follow following, and you're, you say to yourself, well, I'm safe because I have a big following on one platform. For me, that's just dangerous because if tomorrow that platform goes away, or if for some reason you get kicked off that platform, or for whatever reason yeah. you lose credibility, or that platform loses credibility, then you're really in deep, deep trouble. Exactly. Instead, the reason that I love personal branding so much is if you've I look at these platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, 
Twitter not as places that I can sell things, but as places that I can use to build my brand so that even if Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, face, uh, YouTube go away tomorrow, what remains with all of the people that have been watching is my brand. Exactly. So I think that you know, products and services and ideas are a plenty, mm -hmm. um, but I think that ultimately at the end of the day, people buy or do business with you because of your brand and uh, it's it's a 50 50 thing of your vibes and all you you are coming outside of you completely and i totally agree because you know africans generally we tend to be like yeah i'm gonna i'm not gonna say all my life i'm gonna keep in my in my shoes and not go outside and not because you know people are afraid to yeah. share who they are yeah and i think your the personal branding is really nice because people need to, to see the value and you know, I think also like to that point, and I have a lot of people say to me, because I'm, I'm a very open person about a lot of my life. Um, I put my daily stuff out on a vlog. I have, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the social worlds. I share things pretty freely. Um, but I also understand that there is a lot of people that don't want that. And I don't think that you necessarily, like you don't necessarily have to be all out there with your personal life to create a personal brand. Yeah. It just depends on what you're selling. So if you're selling a product, then maybe the story is behind that product. Maybe you wanna feature the people that are making the product. What are their lives like? How are you improving their lives? When they go home, do they think, wow, I have a great boss, or wow, I really believe in this product? There's so many different ways that you can tell a story around a, br a brand that doesn't necessarily mean me putting my whole life out there. So I think that's something that like a lot of people say to me, you, oh, you're so out there, like I don't wanna be out there. You don't necessarily have to be out there. But, but you do have to tell a story. If you cannot tell a story around your product or your service or your idea or anything that you're doing, you are really in deep, deep trouble. I totally agree. And also, I wanted to ask you, how did you came to that? Like, what, what, like, what did you learn in school? How did you get here? Because I know that there's a lot of things. It's a great... You know, entrepreneurs, in general, they have a... Pretty <laughs> have different, pretty uh, different wind, the wind has been the, the road has been windy let's just put it that way <laughs> um, you know I I was raised in a small town in the middle of the United States called Peoria Illinois um, oh, Illinois, is Illinois next, to next to Michigan yeah, where you studied exactly. uh, where you lived for a little while and um, I you know I had two incredible parents and I had two um, amazing siblings and um, just knew that, that m the curiosity inside of my soul was huge. And I knew from a very, it's just funny, I knew from a very young age that, and I remember telling my mother when I was really young, I said, mommy, I want to influence millions of people. And, and I just knew that I, I wanted to do that somewhere other than Illinois. I have a lot of respect for the state and I have an immense amount of respect for the city that I grew up in and the people that make it so um, magical and charming. But I knew that I needed to kind of f spread my wings and fly and literally, I, I moved to San Francisco after college. I played football in college, and then I had to stop because of some concussion issues. Um, and then I ended up moving to San Francisco. And then I moved to New York, where I pursued a law degree from the City University of New York. Then I worked for Mayor Bloomberg's re-election campaign. Then I worked in his administration as a speechwriter. Um, and, and then I started a couple of social enterprise projects during that time in the Dominican Republic and Argentina. And what I saw that was really kind of the theme of all of that was that no matter what you wanted someone to do for you, whether that was work on your campaign as a volunteer or adopt your policy as the mayor or give you money for a project in the Dominican Republic for an orphanage or sign up for free health care in Argentina, the thing that linked all of them was how you communicated that story. Exactly. How you communicated to the people that you needed to do something for you. Who were they and how do you talk to them? And I think that for me, it was uh, it became an art of how to get people to do things that you want them to do. And I don't even say exactly. that I'm not yeah. even saying that in a manipulative way, like because I always believed in what I was doing, and so that end goal was well. But I need to get people on board, whether whether that be from time or energy or money, and um, and I saw that and I said, well, if that's true for me, then it must be true for other brands and other entrepreneurs and other small businesses in the world. And five years ago, I went out on my own and started my own branding company. And that's kind of the backstory behind why this and how I got there. I just saw the power of words and story to make anything happen whatsoever. Yeah. And so you believe in the win-win relationship? 100%. In fact, I actually believe that I want to do more for other people than they do for me. Oh. Like I actually always want, I, I'm, it's strange. And I, I've only recently, and I'm 34, I've only recently, I would say in the last year, come to grips, not even, in the last six months, yeah. come to grips with the fact that I actually am uncomfortable with receiving 
Yeah. And like I, I love more than anything creating magical moments for other people. If you said to you me today, created oh, my magical I created. <laughs> you <did>. I, <laughs> you're so <laughs> sweet. But listen, I want to create magical moments for other people. Yeah. The minute someone says to me, "Hey, I have a surprise for you," I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. no." <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. So, but I think that's like. I spent 33 years of my life, not 33 literally, but like 20, 25, as long as I've been conscious about it, trying to figure out like why, 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 and try to be a better receiver. I just think I'm a good giver. And I'm, and I'm actually, I think that all, of all, if not most of my, uh, most if not all of my entrepreneurial success has been because I actually am obsessed with giving. And um, you can ask any person around me, they will all have a story about something that I did for them that was like, wow. And I think that I carry that over to my business and I, I think that's the biggest, I think there's so many takers in the world and the second you, f you feel yeah. that, what do you do? You push, you push, push away, away, right? You don't wanna be around takers. Yeah. And so I try to actually, it's not even, for me it's not even 50-50, it's like 95-5. But you know, it's good because you embrace yourself. Like you, you said that I am like that. And I am. I'm just gonna get embrace myself like that. And that's hard. That's really hard. Because that's hard. You know, people tend to say that yeah, I'm giving too much. People, people, people are selfish. Why they don't give it to me or what? But you just need to embrace yourself. And that's exactly what you did. It's hard. You it, should it, be proud of yourself. I, I appreciate that, and I am. And it's I'm learning more and more about the value of that self awareness. And um, you know, that's that's just one thing that has really been a game changer for me. So, yeah. uh, what what advice can you give like to entrepreneurs, to young people, not only African because we are at the Afrobyte, but all the people in the world who are young and who want to achieve their goals and do what they like, but you know, but the barriers of the society they are pushed out and they just to people who want to embrace themselves to do what they want to do. I think there are a couple of things that I would say if I'm speak like you know if I'm speaking to an African community first, since I know your your station and your 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 publications are mostly focused on African consumers. Um, I would say, look guys, the world is actually extremely connected um, and you might feel like things are taking longer to get to you than you like. And this has been the theme of the conference all day, but they're coming and there are billions more people that are about to come online and the world just gets, the internet gets faster and faster and the world gets more connected and more connected and politics become less important, and education becomes less important, and who, how much money daddy and mommy have become less important. And it, it, it's just, technology is really equalizing every, to the point where it's like, I actually think if you're living in Africa right now, and you have no education, and you have no money in the bank, and you ha have no connections, but you have an idea that you literally cannot imagine not doing, then you have a huge advantage over, over the Harvard student mm -hmm. whose daddy used his connections to get him into the school and he spent the $250,000 in a you know, trust fund. Like, I just, I just think that the, the, the titles and the bureaucracy, it's all falling away. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing in the US. I think that in Africa it's gonna take a little bit longer yeah, because I know that this is a real yeah. thing, like the government's a yeah. real thing there and I'm learning that today. But I also hear a lot of hope and a lot of people that are making good money. Yeah. So I would say the first thing is take your time, like just know that it's coming and keep building and don't get frustrated that it's not here yet. That's the first thing. The second thing I would say, focus on really what it is that you're amazing at mm -hmm. because I can almost guarantee you that you have a 99.9% .9 higher chance of succeeding if you're doing something that you actually want to be doing. You know, and then the third, yeah, <laughs> and then the third thing is like surround yourself with people that believe in you and that can do the things that you can't do. This is actually a big one. Um, I just organizationally, I'm not good, um, and instead of spending 20, 30 hours a week trying to become a better organizer, I just hire someone that can do it for me. Yeah, and then I spend the 20 hours delegate. a week doing delegate the things that you can't do. If you can't sell anything, then hire a salesperson. Exactly. If you can't code, then find a coder. But don't let your dream die because you think, mm, I, I can't do this. And, and like everyone can do what you can't do. There's someone out there that can do what you can't do. And there are a lot of people out there that cannot do what you can do well. So I would say focus, really, really, really focus and go all in on your strengths. Yeah. And that's just, for me, that's been a game changer. I'm a good communicator. I'm great with people. I love the idea of being traveling and being around the world and, 
and helping people tell stories. I'm terrible at, at everything technical. I'm terrible at everything uh, organizational. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really bad with logistics. Like I just, so I don't spend any time on that. Um, and then to the rest of the world that's watching that's like outside of Africa, those three things still apply. Um, maybe a little bit differently, but those three things still apply. And then the fourth thing that I would say that has probably been the most important thing for me is actually sell something, right? Like yeah. everybody's got an idea, everybody. everybody. Uh, like uh, all 500 people or however many people are here today, yep. they all have an idea. Now, one or two of them will actually do something about it, exactly. will actually execute on it. So if you think you have an idea, it. test it. And if you think you have something to sell, sell it. And you'll know right away because if after 6, 12, 18, 24 months you haven't sold anything, well then it's time to rethink your strategy. Um, but the greatest thing about entrepreneurship yeah. is that you're just going to know. Exactly. Like, you're just going to know if what you're selling or offering is something that people want. And it's one thing, this is actually cool, it's one thing if, you, if your mommy or daddy or brother or sister or boyfriend or girlfriend says, it's a great idea, I would, you should definitely do it. It's another thing to see if the market actually buys it. Yeah. So that's for me really fun so, uh, to talk to consumers, see what they want, um, see if you can build it, and see if they'll pay for it. And uh, I think that, that would be the that'd be the starting place of um, of entrepreneur. And then the, the final thing I would say is like audit how you're using your time. So many people, you know, when I first started my business, I, one of the things that I did was this part of like time management because I'm an, yeah. ins an insanely good time manager. Like. It's, it's one of like the crazy, like I can literally tell you down to the second how long a task is gonna take me. And then I can manage, and it's a hard, really hard thing for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, it's really hard. Really I know, hard. I know it's hard. So I um, am an insanely good time manager, and what I used to do is I used to help people manage their time, because part of getting the job that you want or creating the business that you want is managing your time. And I was blown, and I mean blown away. And I think this is partly because I had very rigid parents in terms of, like my father, if he said be ready, at 5 p.m. and you weren't ready at 4:45, he was leaving without you. So I just, yeah. I think I knew like exactly how to but like uh, allocate my day. Yeah. Um, but so many people struggle with this. So many. You so, can't even imagine. Oh, it's <laughs> unbelievable. And so what I would say is, look at how you're actually spending your time. Don't lie to yourself. Like I'm so busy. Really, you're so busy. Um, what did you do after you went home from work? Nothing. Chilled. <laughs> like you're Watch not that busy. TV, yeah. People want to be busy because it's an excuse to procrastinate and it's an excuse to put things off. But like, if, be honest with yourself about if you're actually that busy, and look at how you're spending every single second, and then delegate as much of that wasted downtime. And listen, maybe you want to watch five hours of TV a night. If you're happy, fine. But like, don't say to me, "Oh, I'm miserable." Yeah, exactly. Well, then don't watch five hours of TV. Very much. That was a really powerful message. Sure. I hope they will like it. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, it's my pleasure. <laughs> and uh, I, like, I'll, I'm happy to give you my social yeah. um, tags. Please follow me. All of my stuff online is free, follow completely me. free. I'm <laughs> here to give you guys value. I don't want anything from you. I just want to give you all of the advice that I have. We do a daily call, a weekly call in show. If you guys have questions from Africa, yeah. We'd love to uh, have you on the line. Um, but really, my goal with all of this social world is just to give everything away for free. That's it. I'm not selling you anything. So um, the only thing I would ask of you is at some point when I speak at Madison Square Garden, which is in New York City, it's been my, it's my, my two dreams in life. You want to yeah. hear them? Here there. Number one, influence millions of people yeah. around the world. The whole day. Thank you. Number two, speak at Madison Square Garden in New York City to a sold out crowd. So oh, if you're Google. listening, thank you. If you're listening and... I, I'll, my entire life, you don't have to buy one thing from me. The only thing I ask of you is you either come see me in Madison Square Garden when I speak there, Absolutely. or you send someone that lives in the U.S. Exactly. to the concert. And you share the message to everybody. Can 100%. we get shake shake on that? This is your this is her virtually <laughs> shaking for your her audience. Thanks. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ciao. Bye.